Okay. Um, thanks for those who have been able to join and can also hear us. Um, I'm Gordon McFarlane, um, current president of the PPMA, and um, this is the latest in a series of um, us showcasing um, people who are involved in our um, annual awards. Um, and we're running a number of webinars around um, awards winners and finalists. Um, so this one, as you obviously aware, is focusing on best health and well-being initiative. So we're going to hear, I'm going to let colleagues introduce themselves, but hear first from a colleague from one source, so Havering and Newham. Um, and they were the winners, need to announce that. And then close, but finalists, <laughs> um, Roachford District Council and Brentwood Borough Council. So we're going to split this into, into two parts. Um, what I'd ask that in, in the usual way, if you've got questions or comments, just use the chat function um, and we'll try and we'll, we'll pick up, uh, pick those up so that we've got time at the end for um, just, just a bit of engagement. Um, we're also recording this um, and we'll send the recording out so colleagues who haven't managed to make it will have access to it afterwards and we tend to have a fairly good um, very good response in terms of picking up and, and viewing afterwards. So without further ado, can I first hand over to Vicky, introduce yourself and then go through your presentation. Absolutely. Thanks, Gordon. Um, I'm Vicky Carroll. I work for London Borough of Havering and London Borough of Newham. Um, I'm an HR consultant wellbeing lead for the organisations. Um, I'm going to show you uh, some slides. So I'm just going to share my screen with you guys now. Bear with me. OK, so I um, just wanted to start by saying thank you. Um, it's been a fantastic sort of year and a half. I've been covering the wellbeing here at Havering and Newham. Um, I, we operate, I operate from our HR and OD service, um, obviously provide wellbeing support for all the staff members in Havering and Newham, which is an approximate combined workforce of eight and a half thousand staff. So there's a lot to cover. Um, so we make sure that employee wellbeing is at the heart of everything that we do. Um, our staff members, we wanted to make sure we catered for every element of wellbeing. So we really thought about when we initiated the wellbeing programme in Havering and Newham, um, a programme that would cater for everybody's needs overall. So, you know, we listened to both councils. We went out there to see, you know, what, what is the needs? What are people struggling with? What do we need to provide? What interlinks with our overarching strategy? Um, so we thought about pillars. Um, we did um, a, a survey and we really thought about what, what pillars would be beneficial to provide a really sort of overall well-being programme for our staff members. So we've got four pillars. So we've got psychological, we've got physical, we've got financial and social well-being. So we thought there are sort of key topics, key headings, if you like, and underneath those, we provide the correct support under each of those pillars. We are catering um, as far and wide as possible to those needs of all of the individuals in the organisations. So we really spent some time listening to our employees. We had a pulse survey that was back in February 2022. Uh, we made sure we acted on the feedback. We engaged with all our stakeholders from both councils to understand their needs, their concerns. And obviously there's an understanding being sort of working in partnership between two boroughs. It's understanding that there might be slightly different needs in those boroughs. Mm -hmm. um, so we really addressed those needs and we thought the four pillars really does, you know, give an overarching approach to both. So again, um, we worked collaboratively and again, our four pillars are psychological, physical and financial. So I'm just going to break that down a little bit. So for our psychological well-being, um, we brought into effect, we have an employee assistance programme with our occupational health providers. And with them, that allows our staff to have counselling sessions, um, you know, for any sort of mental health concerns or any needs, any sort of traumas that's going on in people's life. Um, our occupational health um, EAP also provides trauma support to our staff as well, whether that's a, a team of staff or whether those are individuals. Um, we've also got, um, separately, separately to our um, EAP, we've got mental health first aiders. So this is where we have trained, qualified staff members in Havering and Newham um, and they attend a mental health first aid training course. They have an initial course and then they have a more intense course. 
after that intense course they are qualified under the mental health first aid england and that gives them the opportunity to be a support to all of our other staff members within the organizations so we've got a pool of maybe about 40 mental health first aiders in newham and about the same in havering so we we tend to work collective collaboratively so we would do, we have staff members in in havering that, that are in need of mental health support we could co connect them with somebody in newham or havering so we use them as a, a wider network of mental health first aiders that's a really good successful um initiative that we've got in place and it is you know very much used um and, and very worth you know implementing if i don't know something that i would advise any borough to to think about training their own staff members to become a mental health first aider separate to that um we have we work with um a mindfulness cognitive therapy app we work with a provider called thrive um we find them very helpful. Um, we signpost staff to use and download their app. Um, and again, that's another approach where people can um, link into the Thrive app and um, obtain cognitive behavioural therapy. They can do breathing exercises um, and also they can obtain counselling services via their online chat function as well. So there's lots of great sort of different ways people, we, you know, people can approach the psychological aspect and get support from different avenues. And I'm always harping on how confidential these all are. Um, so that's, yeah, I feel that the psychological support is imperative um, to people's well-being um, and allows them to sort of get on with their day jobs and have that support in the background if they need it. So that's our psychological element. We've then got our physical uh, pillar. So underneath our physical scheme, we have a virtual exercise program. So this is something that our Havering Sports Development team um, have brought in exercise trainers to deliver online classes. So this was something that happened during COVID, which meant you know, everybody that was working from home had the option to link into these online classes and have some, you know, regular movement and keep up their exercise during the working week. Um, so we've got aerobics, we've got yoga, we've got Pilates, desk exercise and Zumba. Um, and like I say, all those classes are delivered through the working week. Some are early in the morning, some are late at night, some are in the middle of the day um, and they're all recorded as well, which means our staff can you know, continue those exercises or do them at a time that suits them better. Um, so also under physical, we have our cycle to work scheme. So that is a salary sacrifice scheme. Um, we work with an external provider. Um, it's very, you know, something that through wellbeing, we advertise and promote this to staff and it just allows them to purchase bike equipment and um, utilise that scheme and have the purchases deducted from their salary so it means it's just a lot easier for them um, and again it keeps them healthy and fit and it, it encourages staff to go out there and cycle so that's our physical element we've then got financial so currently financial is growing um obviously we do have the cost of living so we will really try to address the, at the heart of that to make sure that people are getting advice and support um in every element of uh, financial well-being so we have a staff loan provider, so we work with an external provider where staff can um, obtain a loan, it doesn't affect their credit report, it's deducted from their salaries um, and it's a really sort of beneficial way if somebody is not wanting to sort of go out there in the market and obtain a loan elsewhere, um, it's quite competitive as well. So that's, that's a great offer for our staff. Um, we also have financial webinars. Um, we work with, apologies, my phone's going, but we work with... Um, um, we work with um, some lenders, some, some you know, financial lenders out there that will deliver webinars to us for free. We work in partnership. So everything we do, we try and I try and make sure it's as cost effective, if not free, as possible. Because what I didn't mention at the beginning of my presentation is that we don't have any funding for wellbeing in either borough. So we, we try and grow as much as we possibly can, provide as much support as possible with as very little spend as possible. So really beneficial so in terms of financial to get as much um kind of working in partnership with financial organizations as possible that are happy to deliver some expertise to our staff is fantastic um we also have a staff benefits and discounts platform which um means that our staff can log on to a platform connected to our organizations um, and they can immediately benefit from discounts whether it's you know, shopping, supermarket shopping or holidays or theatre tickets, you name it, it's on there. So that's really beneficial and, and highly utilised as well. 
Um, and then the other element that we have is we work with an external provider on a healthcare cashback plan. So that means that rather than having actual private healthcare insurance, um, they can join into this scheme and they've got a cashback to their kind of everyday um, for like dentist optometry and all those kind of things. And they can seek to, to um, basically get their money back. Um, so that's another good scheme that people tend to use. Um, so that's our financial. And then we have social well-being. So under social well-being, um, so every year, once a year in each borough, we have um, employee recognition awards. So we put out to our staff um, the ability to nominate each other, nominate their teams or, you know, cross teams um, for specific awards. So a bit like the PPMA, but obviously an internal um, aspect. Um, we seek to get these awards fully sponsored, again, being as cost effective as, as possible. Um, and it's really, you know, the morale for these awards. We have a ceremony, it's hosted by our chief exec. Um, we have our mayor there um, and it's very much celebrated that we have, you know, finalists and winners at those awards. So that's an annual thing that we do, one in Havering and one in Newark. Um, we also, under our social element, have staff forums. So what that means is we've got a different group. So we've got an LGBTQ plus forum. We've got an ability forum, a women's forum, a BAME forum in Havering, a race equality forum in Newham, a young persons forum, a faith forum and a men's forum. And these are all forums that are chaired by our internal staff members. And they're all sponsored by our senior management teams in both boroughs. So each forum will collectively get together monthly um, and they will have members in those forums and they will discuss ideas, they will um, create events, um, they will recognise wellbeing days. So for example, International Women's Day, we had our women's forum and we organised a whole day event and we did that jointly with Havering and Newham. And it just meant that we could promote um, any services that we support internally for women, but also signpost services externally and have some expert speakers on some specific topics around women's health. So um, that's our, our social staff forums. Um, so after that, um, it was just about now, how do we create awareness and evidence the success of all of these? So in terms of create aware creating awareness, we work with different groups. We've got workforce steering, wellbeing steering groups within Havering and within Newham. We've got a mental health first aid network, as I mentioned earlier, um, and we have health champion network as well. So we make sure we are always having regular meetings, monthly meetings. We um, advertise all the services, continuously working with our communications teams. Um, we work with our public health teams. And I also send out on a monthly basis um, wellbeing news to all of our managers across both, both boroughs. Um, so they've got a complete up to date what's available for our staff members. Um, so overall, we work in a collaborative way, both boroughs together. Um, and we the collaborative approach and co-creation of the wellbeing offer helps us to develop and expand services, activities. Um, we promote this corporately and share with the communications teams, as mentioned earlier, and all of our internal networks. Um, we work with external providers, making sure we've got good relationships with them as well. So we utilise as many services that they provide. Um, and we're always seeking to advertise as much as possible using all of our internal kind of platforms. Um, so, yeah, so that's our Havering and Newer, and that's how we work. And um, I will hand over to Nicola to now carry forward. Um, so over to you, Nicola. Thank you, Vicky. Definitely worthy winners. Lots going on there. So, um, so, so I am Nicola Mann. I am the Acting Director of People and Governance at Brentwood Borough Council and Rochford District Council. So just for those of you who don't know where we are, we are South East Essex, um, and we're two fairly small tier two authorities within the bigger region of Essex. We employ, unlike Vicky, a very, very small number. So we employ just over about 400, just over maybe, staff across the two, the two councils. So very, very small. So the reason um, why I put a nomination in for health and wellbeing was an initiative that we created as we started our partnership. So it was the light bulb moment of our chief exec, Jonathan Stevenson. Um, and his rationale was that he wanted to bring us together as two teams, you know, two teams to one team. And that he thought that it would be a great idea 
to get us to do some kind of virtual challenge and that it would be really great to climb the Yorkshire Free Peaks in 12 hours um, in September. Great, great idea. So um, that, that's kind of where it was created. That was that was his idea. He told me it would be fun and, and, and got me on board. So uh, hence, hence why I got involved. So yeah, next slide, please, Vicky. Thank you. So as I said, the why was predominantly to come together as one team. We, we started our partnership in the January of 2022, and he just felt that it was a good time to start, you know, looking at ways in which we could come together in a social environment and, and start getting that ethos of working together. It was also around, you know, looking at post-COVID, getting us more physically active, um, and also he wanted to raise as much money as he could for local charities within the South Essex region. So they were his wise and... Um, you know, that, that's kind of where we started to develop our, our idea and where it come to life. So I think next slide. So he managed to convince 40 of us um, to take part in, in, in his little idea. Um, and I'm, I'm using pictures because I think pictures tell a thousand words. And um, I think what, what this picture kind of shows us is that we signed up, we, 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 we set off, we've we done a lot of prep, um, but literally the day we set off um, on the coach, there was a number of things that happened and it meant that, you know, lots of considerations had to be made in terms of whether some people had to, to maybe turn back. And so there, there was lots going on that day because unfortunately our, our queen passed away the day we, we travelled up. So, you know, there was there was lots going on, even as we was, you know, starting on our journey. Um, bearing in mind also, there was a lot of rain, the weather wasn't great, the traffic, there was diversions. And as you see in that picture, a few of us aged on that coach journey is all I would say about that. Because <laughs> one of them is me. <laughs> um, but we, 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 we decided we was going to do it and we took on the challenge and there we all are at the bottom of, of one of the first mountains, ready to, to start off and, and start our, our journey up those Yorkshire Free Peaks. So, next slide, sorry, Vicky. So we we kind of set off in, in groups as, as it were, and, and you know, that was the plan. However, you know, these things never go to plan. And what sort of happened was there was people that were very eager to, to make it to the top of the summits. There were those that were busy chatting and not really <laughs> thinking about, you know, oh dear, we're at the back and where is everyone gone? Um, so there was lots of that. But what it did do is forge lots of different friendships because we did all kind of start going off in, in different little groups. And it wasn't just, you know, people that maybe knew each other at Brentwood or, or people that, that knew each other from Rochford. So in that respect, although it wasn't the plan, it, it worked out for, for the better, I think, when we reflect on, on the day. There was lots of smiles along the way, lots of pictures, as you can see lots of pride, lots of encouragement from everybody. And every time someone reached a summit, they took a picture. And if your Wi-Fi, no, not your Wi-Fi, your 3G was working, then, you know, you might have got the picture. Otherwise, you didn't know where half the team were. Um, but, you know, it, it was fun. And, and we all, you know, that very first summit, we thought, yes, we've, we've done it and didn't really focus too much on the next two. Um, next slide, please. And there was the unfortunate element um, to this because of the not focusing too much. Um, several of us did get lost along the way. Um, <laughs> I seem to be the common denominator in all of these because I was in the lost team as well. So, you know, maybe that says something about me. Um, but yeah, we, we did. We, we reached the summit. We were the last. However, what I would, I, the way I like to look at it, is that we were making sure that we took everybody on the journey and we really were embracing the, the one team philosophy um, and we, we, we stuck together. So when we reached the top of the summit, after some of those individuals there decided to tell me they had vertigo at the very top <laughs> and, and had a, bit, a moment of freezing, um, we, we got there, we got there together, we got to the top of the summit and we, we followed. Um, I won't I won't pick out who we followed, but we picked out, we, we followed a certain someone who went off in a direction we thought they knew they, where they were going. So we just followed the leader, as it were. Um, however, we did go the wrong way. 
And that meant that the lost team went off course for about four and a half miles and two and a half hours later with no data, no phones, and a lot of worried people as to where we were, um, you know, a couple of hours on. We weren't where we were meant to be. Um, so thankfully, um, we, we managed to, to, to redirect ourselves and, and get ourselves back on the path that we were meant to be on. We met a few sheep along the way, um, and, and there was, was one of them sitting there posing at the time. And we, we again, in, in, in some respects, it was... It was a good thing that happened because we we gelled as a team. We we had fun. We sung songs. We we kept each other's spirits up. We we pushed each other to carry on going, um, and we did that as a team, which which was amazing. We we luckily managed to get some signal at a point, and our rescue team picked us up just as we were heading towards the this, the second peak. Um, it did mean that because we'd gone off so off track us as a team couldn't complete and we only actually did the one but you know in ter certain terms of kind of what it did create in in that ethos of one team it certainly did that with our little team so so that it was a blessing so next slide so this is in pictures how it ended for some of us it was all too much <laughs> and we had to have a little sleep for many it was about getting some well, you know, fuel, food, drink, and a, and a, and a well-deserved hot tub to, to, to kind of rest those, those weary feet. But what did happen is the majority of, of those 30 did, did complete the challenge in, in 11 hours. It was about 11 hours they'd done it in. And, you know, the, the aspirations of Jonathan kind of coming together as one team really was forged that day. And it, it has made an impact and a lasting impact on on the journey of one team, um, without a doubt. And we also raised about 11,000 pounds for local charities in the South Essex region. So again, it, it, it was well worth doing. Would I do it again? I don't know, but <laughs> it was well worth doing. So next slide, sorry. We haven't stopped there though. We, we have continued and, and probably a bit as Vicky touched on, we, we do do a lot. It isn't just about one one thing. We do a lot that tries to promote elements of, of well-being, um, physical. This is the physical element of it for, for what we put our award in. And we do lots of other stuff. But yeah, in terms of those physical things, we, we do weekly lunchtime walks. We do virtual challenges for people that maybe can't get out for, for other reasons and want to take part, but can't necessarily do it when and where we might be doing something. So we also put on virtual challenges. We did a winter walk in, in January, which was the marathon, but but walking and and that was about 25 of us. So, you know, that, that was really well attended. And we did do the National Free Peak. So I obviously didn't learn my lesson. Um, we did the National Free Peaks this year and we did that as a wider public sector challenge. So that was really good. And I think we raised about just over 60,000 for, for cancer research as a, as a collective. So, you know, there's there's a, lots of stories to tell you on that one as well. So, but I maybe will save that for another day. And yeah, we are also looking at doing the Welsh National Free Peaks in September next year. So still continuing to, to do lots of these things and hopefully raise some, some great money for some well-deserved charities along the way. So that's us. So thank you for listening, everyone. Fantastic. Thank you both. So a couple of really different presentations and different angles on on well-being um <clears throat> just while um people think about putting anything in the in the chat to sort of follow up um i, I, I guess nicola yeah it was 40 people but that's 10 percent of the workforce he got 10 percent of the workforce out in doing that that's pretty impressive doesn't matter about you know the, the size it's it's scale isn't it it's a really impressive and a just fantastic example of team building and bonding etc um and i think that the the picture for me was the person who actually pulled up a chair to to order the um to order the food <laughs> <laughs> i think it was burger king or something i don't i can't even stand to do that and you pull up a chair <laughs> there was lots of sore feet going fantastic there. absolutely he um, did bring us together <laughs> absolutely um just in terms of, of Havering and you and Vicky, um, I mean, I, I, I've come across the, the Thrive app and I, and I guess the, 
one of the things is it, there's four pillars psychological mm. physical financial social um i guess was it difficult to kind of balance out the offer in other words to know what people really needed i know you had some kind of you know work with stakeholders to kind of understand but it's it's so broad and it's all we're all wrestling with that but do you feel you got the balance right i do i do absolutely feel we've got the balance right i feel that anything that new comes that does come about through conversations or maybe through events um that maybe spark something that hadn't been thought of um whatever it is always fits somewhere within our four pillars um so whether it's you know, uh, for example, I've had some queries on endometriosis um, and support with that. So for me, I would immediately reach out to the chair of our women's forum, which un falls under our social well-being. Um, and then we would seek to see what what can we, who can we contact, who, who could we use uh, for support um, to include in our offer. So we're always growing, but we're always sort of sticking with, we definitely found those four pillars really do cover the overall broader spectrum. And I'll tell you, obviously, there are some specific topics like cost of living being the financial that's a huge one of conversation in both boroughs um and also psychological supports and mental health um so they're the two main ones that i would say are most used um but i do feel yeah the offer we we did do a pulse survey back in 2022 so we could really establish what both organizations um felt that they needed and and everyone had a voice in that um and then sort of collating on those responses i, I think that sort of you know help to build the thought pattern behind the four pillars that's really helpful and i know nicola your um your topic in the presentation was was a slightly different angle but does that resonate in terms of the you know what you're finding across the two the two districts in terms of what people need oh yeah with, without a doubt as i say yeah mine was focused predominantly on that that physical element um but yeah, there is a, there is a, a range of tools that we do have at Brentwood and and Rochford, very similar to Vicky, yeah. and definitely finding similar kind of trends really in terms of yeah. its and and what people are saying they need and want. But I think you know the the, the physical element for us was you, you know we're not we you know like Newham and and Haver, we we don't sit on the boundaries. There is a you know there is you know several miles between us like there are Havering and, and Rochford uh Havering and, Rochford, Havering and Newham so it's <laughs> it's how we come together and and really kind of create something as, as Vicky has done actually create something that works across both of those councils and that all our employees can benefit from and that's you know something that we're still we're still emerging on but but we're, we are getting there. So then there's additional consideration different politics different cultures different kind of backgrounds and expectations Absolutely. just going to pick up a question i think it's for vicky from carolyn in the chat any advice about supporting a thriving mhfa network um and i think carolyn's saying you know they've got mhfas but struggle to maximize the initiative okay so we have a system where we we link in with the college so the college it's haven college or new city college um and that i'm in touch with them regularly so they will give me an update if we've got any newly qualified mental health first aiders on board they will signpost that mental health first aider to me to our well-being mailbox um i set up quarterly uh review not review sorry quarterly meetings with the network so we all meet collectively so i co-chair that with a colleague of mine um, so we, there's always someone to cover it, but it just means that all the mental health first aiders can um, meet up quarterly, virtually, um, and discuss. You know, we normally have a, a, an agenda, but we sort of bring some lightheartedness to it. And you know, what have you felt that's been a positive impact for you or for someone else over the past week? You know, just as a kind of lightness to it. But we also discuss where people might be finding certain difficulties. Obviously, we never discuss any calls or scenarios. Um, but another thing that we do, so we meet quarterly, but also I did a buddy system. So I buddy two mental health first aiders up just to support one another, because obviously they need that support as well. Um, 
we don't disclose our mental health first aid network to the organisation. So all the staff members, occasionally I might get a question, can I have a list of all your mental health first aiders? And I will definitely push back and say no, um, because there are certain times where we might have somebody that's saying, you know, I'm really struggling and I'd really like to speak to a mental health first aider. Um, you know, can you put me in touch with somebody? And yeah, of course, I'll go forward to the whole network confidentially. I won't say who the individual is um, and just say, look, we've got an individual who's struggling in Newham or in Havering they're available at this time um is can, can someone step forward and take this call um so then once that happens i introduce them to each other and then they, they're responsible for setting up their call together so again it, it's it's so confidential and i think sometimes it's it, it can be very delicate in terms of conversations and i think if you sort of disclose all your mental health first aiders to the organisation, it allows anyone to contact anyone. And that mental health first aider may not necessarily be in a suitable headspace themselves to be a support on that specific day. So that's why, um, yeah, I would advise, you know, keeping that network um you know, confidential um and being that sort of conduit in between the person in need and the network but also uh, meeting up, whether it's quarterly, monthly, however you would like to do it, whether you do that already. Um, and also, you know, it's opportunity when we've got a new mental health first aider on board um, to introduce them to the group and then to sort of buddy them up with, with their uh, other fellow mental health first aider as well. And it's an opportunity to say, you know, for those that have been a mental health first aider for three years, it's now time to do your refresher course. So it's all those kind of little things. But yeah, to meet, meet quarterly, monthly definitely helps. That's really helpful. Thank you. Because I think the other aspect that I've found with MHFAs and just spotting signs generally is when we're not in the office, we're not in the workplace as much, or you know, for those areas where we're not in the workplace as much, yeah. it is harder to spot signs. So it's a kind of, it's another kind of set of considerations about how we make sure that that service, if you like, is, is effective. But that's really helpful, Vicky. Oh, no problem. Um, I haven't picked up. Oh, yes, I have. As soon as I said that, hang on two seconds. Ah, sorry. Um, so Louise just saying they do actively promote the network. Um, was the advice about not doing this from MHFA themselves or from a colleague with negative experiences? Just a good question about where that's come from. Really good question, actually, because it has been something we've been asked several times. So this was decided between the mental health first aiders. You know, as I say, I co-chair it with a colleague and um, collectively it was a decision that we made collectively. So we as a collective tend to push back. So it wasn't Mental Health First Aid England that advised this, but we just felt it's beneficial for their mental health as well. Um, in case, like I say, they're not in a suitable headspace to, to support somebody else. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. So, in the absence of any other questions, um, the only actually the only one I had, Vicky, was just you had a list on a slide of various kind of worker groups and forums or fora. Um, what's the Ability Forum? Okay, so the Ability Forum is um, chaired by a lady um, who is very it's close to her heart in terms of um, disability. So it's about so it's turning it around. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it, it covers disability, it covers, you know, it's part of our kind of inclusion, equality, diversity and all of that. So that is the form. So say if someone comes forward to me and says, look, I, I have a disability, I need some adjustments, who do I contact? So I would put that person in touch with the ability for and yeah. care. Um, and then, you know, that's just kind of like a go to place uh, for any kind of adjustments in the workplace and advice. Um, and we've got a policy on, on that as well, which falls, you know. No, it, that's, it that's perfect, because I think a lot of us will have, you know, disabled workers groups or whatever. And it's I, I didn't spot quickly enough whether you also had that. So it's just that subtle but important turning yeah. it around. Yeah, yes, that's absolutely. perfect. Yeah, OK. Um, nothing more in the chat. So can I just thank you both very much for your presentations? Um, and Nicola, I'm really pleased to see that. Jonathan's still setting targets, physical targets, but getting you all out there. <laughs> um, and I um, hope everybody's found that useful. As I say, we will make it available uh, more publicly so people can download it and watch it separately. Um, but thank you all very much. Thank okay. you. Thank Thanks. you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.